Have I just been standing here for 10 months? I should probably make a video. Hello everyone, it's been a while. I have a shed now. You might have seen the news. There's this big thing called coronavirus. That means that they've changed the exams. So what I thought I'd do is a video talking about those changes and the guidance that came out today. The disruption to your learning has been huge. And I hope that you've kind of got through the crisis as well as you can. This means that the exam boards have decided to make three kind of big changes to the exams this year. The exams are actually going to be the same, but it's the content which is going to change. First of all, they're going to specify what topics constitute the big questions in the exam. That means that you can really target your revision at those specific topics. Secondly, they're going to say what is not in the exam. This means that you can kind of gloss over those ones in revision. And thirdly, they're going to say exactly what the required practicals on each paper are. And that's quite useful because, you know, there's, there's quite a few of those. There's also a kind of weird hidden grey category. And that's an important thing to remember, is that there are some topics which are neither told that they are in the exam and told they are not in the exam. This means that you need to be familiar with them. Because, as you can see from this information, these topics can be asked as link questions. That means that when those questions reference the whole topic, that they can use those topics in those questions. They could also constitute quick short answer questions. So don't miss those out, because I think that that's what some people might take away from this guidance. They might think, we got told what are in the questions, we got told what's not in, and then you kind of ignore those middle parts. Please be aware that just because this guidance is out, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't not learn things. All right, especially if you're going on to do science at A level. I'm a science teacher, I'm quite biased. I'm passionate about science, I think science is awesome. Just because it's not in the paper, doesn't mean that it's not awesome and shouldn't be learned. I appreciate that some of you are there just for the grade, so this might be a little bit more useful for you, but please learn science, it's good. Also, fun fact, apparently, you cannot take this into the exam, which I'm not gonna lie, would be a bold move. Just rocking up with this is quite tough. Also, if you've never looked at the exam specification before, now's a really good time to do that. The exam specification is an amazing document. It's 200 pages of mostly bluster. However, it does just include those key facts that you need to know for your exam. If it's not on the exam specification, you can't be asked it. So it's like the list of things you need to know. Let's go through each paper. We're gonna do them foundation first, and then we're gonna do the higher. Let's take biology paper one first. This is the exam, which usually covers cell biology, organization, infection response, and bioenergetics. They have specified that it will be on cell division, organs, tissues, and organ systems, communicable diseases, and finally photosynthesis. And they have excluded quite a lot here. You don't need to know about osmosis anymore. You don't need to know about active transport anymore. You don't need to know about heart disease. You also don't need to know about the uses of glucose from photosynthesis and respiration. So that's quite a lot that's taken out. For the higher paper then, they have specified that your questions will be on cell division again animal tissues, organs and organ systems again, and photosynthesis. So very similar to the foundation paper, which is what we'd expect. What they've cut out here is quite a lot actually. You don't have to do anything about microscopes. You don't have to do anything about cell transport. That's massive. That means no diffusion, osmosis, active transport. You don't have to do about viral diseases. You don't have to do about fungal diseases. You don't have to do about protist diseases. So for the first time, something has actually eradicated malaria. You don't have to do about human defense systems. You don't have to do about the uses of glucose from photosynthesis. You don't have to do about the response of exercise, which you're probably seeing here as I get a bit animated and a bit out of breath. God, I'm unfit. Biology paper two is the paper of homeostasis and response, infection, variation, and evolution, 
and ecology. And there's again quite a few changes here. For both the foundation and the higher paper, the topics which are really singled out are hormonal control in humans, reproduction, and then for the foundation paper, adaptations, interdependence and competition, and organization of an ecosystem. For the higher paper, there's instead a emphasis on biodiversity and humans' role in that. There's quite a few emissions here. That means things like the nervous system is gone. Things like hormones, things like contraception is gone. Please learn about contraception, it's very important. Things like variation, evolution, a lot of that topic is not gonna be in the exam. And also, lots of things like global warming and deforestation. I presume the exams board is like, that's probably gonna crop up in the chemistry. So now let's look at the chemistry papers. Now this is gonna be a short section of the video. For both chemistry papers one and chemistry papers two, you've gotta learn it all. Learn it all. Learn all the chemistry, every single part of the chemistry. Chemistry is awesome. Apart from, in paper two, in the foundation paper, you don't need to know about carbon dioxide and methane as greenhouse gases. What a bonus. And for paper two higher, you don't need to know about your gas tests. So, squeaky pot, relying a glowing splint, lime water, don't need to know about it, go on. Physics. Physics here kind of sits a little bit in between the biology and the chemistry. Remember, they've already given you an updated equation list for physics. So a lot of changes have already happened. Remember, you don't need to memorize the equations like you have done in previous years. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be familiar with those equations. So learning the equations isn't actually a bad thing because it means you'll be better at them in the exam. Physics paper one is the paper of energy, electricity, particle model of matter, and radioactivity. It's the atomic structure one, but it's the radioactivity is the kind of physics-y part of it. The only emissions for Physics Paper 1 Foundation are domestic uses of electricity, the particle model to do with pressure and atoms and isotopes. Although that does come up in the chemistry, so hopefully, you know, you should learn it anyway. For paper one higher, don't need to know about series and parallel circuits, gone. Same with the domestic uses and safety, and internal energy and energy transfers is gone. So internal energy, remember, is the sum of kinetic and potential, and all to do with changes of state. For paper two, both foundation and higher, you don't need to worry about forces and elasticity. Additionally, for paper two in the physics, higher, it's probably one of the most bizarre alterations of the entire document. You do not need to know about permanent magnetism or induced magnetism and things like magnetic forces, which is bizarre because one of the topics that has been specified is the motor effect, which relies on electricity and magnetism. So those are the topics which really are taken out and I've also tried to list those topics which are specified. I haven't really gone into much detail with the required practicals. I think I'll do a separate video on the required practicals. I'd like to thank you for your patience. Recording videos at the end of a long day is always something which takes a lot of motivation to do. Um, and as you can see, I've moved house. So that's really dominated my life over the last few months. Hopefully this will be the start of more things. I really want to finish those exam papers and also really focus in on how to revise. I think lots of you maybe don't know how to and that's somewhere where I can help out. So hopefully you feel a little bit more comfortable with what AQA have done to their changes to the combined science. If you need to look at it in more detail I've put a link in the description for how to access this document which makes me look like a crazy person. And until next time I'll see you later.